Hello everyone, for today's video we'll be taking a look at the original polymer frame striker fire pistol. That of course being none other than the Heckler & Koch VP70Z. While Glock obviously dominates the market today, 12 years before what would become known as the Glock 17 was released back in 1982, H&K introduced the VP70Z. In production from 1970 until 1989, there are two variants, the VP70Z and the VP70M. The VP70M allowed for a stock to be attached and now gave the user the option of 3 round burst. The M and VP70M being the designation for military. Whereas on this model, the Z designates civil or civilian. Which of course means this model is strictly semi-automatic. Using the date code on the barrel and the Heckler & Koch website, I was able to determine this pistol was manufactured back in 1980. Now the first time I ever saw this pistol, it was in Capcom's 1998 rendition of Resident Evil 2 in the hands of Leon Kennedy. Interesting note on that, the 1998 rendition of Resident Evil 2 is the only time Capcom actually used the correct name for this firearm. Later on, it's referred to as the Matilda, which is a reference to Luc Besson's 1994 film, The Professional. The protagonist of that film, portrayed by Jean Reno, is named Leon, and now the Portman's character is Mathilda. And I can only speculate the reason they refer to the pistol as Matilda versus Mathilda is it's easier to pronounce. This is a gun I always figured maybe I'd get it one day, if I didn't, that'd be alright. I'd priced them online a bit, and everyone was asking far more than I wanted to pay for them. I mean, sure, it's the original striker fired pistol, but the trigger is pretty bad. Until I actually bought this one, I'd only seen about two in person, and even then, the price was more than I ever would have paid for them. In fact, one of them wasn't even for sale, it was just on display. Then one day, I was just perusing around a gun show, and I see this one on a table, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, huh, it's not a bad price. Online, I've seen them for about anywhere from $800 and up. This one, after tax, was about $660. For that price, I'm thinking, yeah, why not? I didn't jump on it right away. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it. Now, yes, the trigger is atrocious in this firearm. However, if you're going up against the undead, wouldn't be an issue. Unless, of course, you're in Dawn of the Dead and they can run. Then I would say don't use this one. Now, of course, in Resident Evil, the undead are much slower, so it wouldn't be too bad. However, Claire Redfield's Browning High Power is definitely a much better gun than this one. Though I will admit, an 18-round magazine, kind of hard to complain about that. Which, mind you, 18 rounds in the 1970s, that's pretty impressive for a handgun. I was able to track down another magazine, about $100, almost on par with the original CZ-75 magazines. Though I have found out that in some of the older CZ-75s, the new magazines do work in them. Results may vary though. I will note that in Resident Evil 2, Leon can shoot this gun relatively well. Of course, the zombies are all just getting body shots. Though, of course, in the opening cutscene, he does do a headshot. Uh, wait! Don't shoot! Get down! And as you probably just saw, this has a heel release, does not have a magazine release. This is actually the thumb safety on this gun. So the in-game reloads are not exactly accurate. And of course, after you fire your last round, the slide does not lock open. Another thing I will add about the VP70Z is that there is another firearm that's currently in production which looks awfully similar. I'll be right back. As you know, I still have my yeet cannon. As I'm sure most of you are aware, I do own a high point yeet cannon. If you haven't seen the video on this farm, I'll link that right here for you. Anyway, looking at the high point yeet cannon and the Heckler & Koch VP70Z, I often wonder if high point didn't kind of copy H&K's homework a little bit. I mean, it's not exact, but the resemblance is a little uncanny. Now, while both pistols do have the blowback design, surprisingly, the high point does have a much better trigger. I have read there are trigger kits for the VP70Z, which I might look into and just make it a little bit smoother shooting. Though, of course, I don't know how much more I will shoot this gun. Probably a little bit more. Speaking of which, let's go to the range real quick.
Yeah, the first time going out, not too accurate at all. Let's try again, shall we? Well, I wasn't much better this time, was I? While I can't shoot this gun very well, I will say it is definitely nice to have. If you are interested in getting one, they do show up on Gun Broker periodically. However, as I said, I found mine at a gun show, surprisingly, and at a very reasonable price as far as I'm concerned. Well, being I am a fan of the Resident Evil franchise, the games more than the movies, though I will say I did watch the movies again recently, and the first film, as a standalone, not too bad. After that, pretty much loses its momentum. Now, in the time of remakes, maybe Resident Evil wouldn't be too bad, so long as they followed the source material, of course. Well, anyway, that was my video on the original striker-fired polymer frame pistol, the Heckler & Koch VP70Z. As always, have a good day. See ya!